Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, this is an integral I got off of the channel Maths 505. Um, parts of the solution are going to be similar. Um, however, I wanted to, um, to do this integral because it employs um, the formula that I derived in my, uh, in my last video. And you'll, you'll see how that comes into play. Uh, he utilizes basically the same formula. Um, his solution differs slightly from mine. Um, his is a little bit faster, um, but I'm, I'm going to show you this way. All right, so our first step in solving this is to employ differentiation by, or I'm sorry, integration by parts. Um, you can see we let our u equal the natural log of 1 minus e to the x. Therefore, our du is e to the negative x over 1 minus e to the negative x. And we will let our dv be our x sine x dx, implying that our uh, v is sine x minus x cosine x. Okay. And there should have been, um, well, anyway. Um, so what we get is this. We get that this is going to be u times v evaluated at the bounds, by the way. Um, these bounds will go away. If you evaluate it, take the limit as x goes to infinity, you will get zero. And if you take the limit as x goes to zero, you will also get zero, leaving you nothing but our integral uh, minus the integral uh, over our bounds of v du. All right, so that, that leaves us with this. You can see I got rid of the negative sign here by just switching this and this. All right, so our next step is just to split that integral up. I don't even know why I included that um, in the steps, but we're going to split that into two separate integrals. All right, our next step, we're going to perform the substitution that u is equal to e to the negative x, and that gives you this. We perform that substitution on both of our integrals. So um, our integral just becomes this. All right. Now our next step is to employ Euler's formula. We know that e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x, meaning that e to the i natural log x is cosine natural log x plus i sine natural log x. But don't forget, e to the nat i natural log x is just e to the natural log of x to the i. e and natural log cancel out, so that just becomes x to the i, meaning that cosine x is going to be the real part of x to the i, and sine natural log x is going to be the imaginary part of x to the i. Um, and you can see we can employ that here. We have a cosine natural log x and a sine natural log x. All right, so our next step is to define an auxiliary function as both an integral and a sum. This is our auxiliary auxiliary function defined as an integral. Um, now, I was tempted to just let our auxiliary function be um, this, this integral right here without the addition of this minus 1, but then the integral wouldn't converge, and I've been yelled at for that before so i just put that negative one right in there that integral does converge and we can convert that to an infinite sum easily enough like this so our f of t is both equal to this and this all right now our next step is to differentiate the auxiliary function both versions of it so differentiating f prime of t, that's just d dt of our auxiliary function, and it's also d dt of our auxiliary function defined as a sum. So these things are all equivalent. And then performing that differentiation under the integral sign and under the summation sign gives the following. So all we do is take the partial with respect to t of our integrand there, and we get this. And likewise, if we bring that differentiation, just differentiate this sum term by term with respect to t and do some simplification, we will get this. So our f prime of t is both equal to this and equal to this. All right. Now we're going to express the integrals, meaning these two integrals right here in terms of the auxiliary function and its derivative. 
All right, so we can see that if we take the imaginary part of f and evaluate it at i, we simply get the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the i minus 1 over 1 minus x dx. Um, this minus 1 over 1 minus x is going to uh, go away, basically, when you, um, when you take the imaginary part of it, because this is purely real. So we're just left with this. And we can bring that imaginary um, operation inside the integral like that. And we know um, previously that the imaginary part of x to the i is just the integral, uh, is just sine natural log x. So we can say that the imaginary part of our auxiliary function uh, evaluated at i is equal to this right here, which is part of, th this, is, this is one of the integrals that we needed. Um, and now we can take the real part of our f prime to get this. Just the, basically the exact same idea is up here. We just take the real part of f prime evaluated at i to give us this part. So now we have these two integrals expressed in terms of our auxiliary functions. And don't forget, we can use any version of the auxiliary function we want. So, um, our, um, this integral is just the real part of f prime of i, and this integral is just the imaginary part of f of i. All right, so we can rewrite i as the imaginary part of f of i minus the real part of f prime of i which is just this. This is exactly what we need. That is our target uh, value right there. But now let's let's just plug um, i and i into both um, the uh, our sum summation version of our sum, our summation version of our auxiliary function, and do the same for the for its derivative. So if i is equal to the imaginary part of f of i minus the real part of f prime of i, we can plug it into any version of our auxiliary function and its derivative. And this is what you get if you do that. So i is now the imaginary part of this sum minus the real part of this sum. So I just, I basically, um, you know, I take the negative signs out, negative signs out, distribute and rearrange it. And now we just have this. So now we need to take the real parts. So let's take the real ima and imaginary parts. So um, taking the real part of this, basically all we do is we multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of this squared. Uh, you can see I grouped the n plus one just to make um, the, uh, the real parts and the imaginary parts separate. So you can see we multiplied the top and the bottom by this top bottom. And then that's going to simplify to this. So we're just going to head the, the real part of this is simply this because the imaginary part goes away. This, this part is imaginary. It goes away. So we're left with nothing but this. And now we need to take the imaginary part of the thing that's inside our other sum. And we do it the same way. All we do is multiply. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of the complex term in our um, denominator. You can see I did that right here, and that simplifies nicely to this. All right, so next, we're just going to simplify the sum. Now we just plug those two back values back in, and we have i is equal to this sum minus this sum. So we can bring that together as one sum, and you can see that this, uh, this denominator right here is simply this denominator squared. So let's multiply the top and bottom of this fraction right here by um, the denominator right here, and we'll get this, and you'll see that uh, this n plus 1 squared nicely cancels out with this n plus 1 squared. When you do that, giving us nothing but this, and then we can just shift the index and subtract 1 from all the n's inside the sum to get this. All right, and now we're going to employ that formula that I derived in my last video. This is the formula that I derived. This I call this the um, shifted reciprocal square sum right here, and it evaluates to this for all real A. 
possibly complex A2, I'm not sure, but definitely for all real A, this, this sum will evaluate to, um, uh, to this expression right here. So that's nice. All right. And you'll notice that our target sum that we want is actually this. And we almost have that here, except we don't have it squared. So it would make sense. We can get a squared here in the denominator just by differentiating this with respect to A. That would introduce a squared right here. So let's differentiate both sides of this expression with respect to A. All right. So we have the derivative with respect to a of this is equal to the derivative with respect to a of this. Performing that differentiation inside the sum term by term, that's going to give you this. And you'll see I just bring the negative 2 uh, right outside. So this, this is valid. That is the derivative with respect to a of this. And taking the derivative with respect to a of this, it, it's messy. But, you know, you can take the derivative of any function. It's, it's just, it, you just follow the rules and you, you'll get this. All right, so that's a little bit messy. So, um, but don't forget, um, all we need to do is evaluate this at a is equal to one, and we have the, the thing that we need. That's, it's literally going to equate to this. If we evaluate that expression, that derived expression right there at a is equal to one, this part will just become i. So let's evaluate both sides at a is equal to one, and we get this there that's this is the exact sum this is our i this is this is the exact value of the thing of our original integral and it's equal to this all right so in conclusion uh this integral the integral from zero to infinity of x times sine x times natural log one minus e to the negative x dx is equal to negative quantity pi squared cosecant hyperbolic squared of pi plus pi cotangent hyperbolic of pi minus 2 all over 2. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.